Dungeons & Dragons is a thrilling adventure, one we play together as Dungeon Master and players, but also an adventure itself. Now we stand at the start of a new generation of Dungeons & Dragons, and today we're going to introduce some of what's in store for us as we embark on an initiative that we call One D&D. Growing up, I loved fantasy, but I never saw myself as the hero because I didn't think it was possible for someone who looked like me, who acted like me, who was like me to be that hero. We want to continue to reach out to folks who are interested in fantasy, who love storytelling, who enjoy spending time with their friends and creating these collective stories that they can remember for years to come. D&D's been around for 50 years and there's very little that persists that long that becomes generational that people can really just not only share, but literally hand down to their kids. What we wanna do is just add to that legacy. We did a smart thing with Fifth Edition by listening to the fans. And what came out of that process was a system that is stable, that is well-loved, that incorporates the best elements of earlier editions. Now that we have that, we are no longer in the position where we think of D&D as an addition. It's just D&D. Fifth Edition is a rule set that has worked for so many people and has brought so many new and exciting folks into the game. It's more important for us to continue to cultivate and respect and, and love what it is you know, th that the world has told us is working for them. The sort of change you're going to see isn't about taking anything away from you, isn't about changing any of that stuff that you love. It's much more about giving you more, giving you more options, giving you more um, choices you can make, more character types you can play, more magic spells you can cast. Basically, you know, we're very happy with the game the way it is today. We just want to build on that. We're revising the major core rule books that every player uses, the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual. One of my focuses, specifically, is the Dungeon Master's Guide. I'm gonna make some structural changes to make it more friendly to new DMs. When it comes to art for D&D, &D, it's about as versatile as our players. We wanna show that the person you are can appear in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. That's what 2024 holds is this promise of getting new versions of the books that are the game you know, but reflect where the game is presently. One D&D &D has three pillars, and uh, one is the rule set, which is built on the base of fifth edition, but updated. We're building upon the rules that have been established, the storytelling, and expanding our world and our rule system. When we say building on top of fifth edition, what we mean is that um, all the adventures and supplements that have been released in the past 10 years will still be playable with the new evolution of D&D. &D. Then there's D&D Beyond, which is the base of our digital tools and assists for players in DM. Currently, players are cobbling together all kinds of different apps and websites to have a true integrated D&D experience. What we want to do is actually just provide all the tools that the players need to play themselves in one space. Right now with the acquisition of D&D Beyond, we've already started to dip our toe into digital, and it was a fantastic partnership that we have going, but we can add more. Digital physical bundles is something that we've wanted to do for a long time, and now that D&D Beyond is part of our family, it's finally something we can do. Your content is available anywhere you want it, and you have those physical books, but you've got nice portable versions that you can access through through your phone or through your tablet or through your other device. Then our future facing aspect of this is the D&D Digital, which will become a full play space for you to have experiences that are more immersive. Right now we're in early development of our digital experience. We can play a game, roll some dice, see the miniatures moving around in a 3D play space, um, but that's just the core of it. We chose the Unreal Engine for several reasons. Reason number one, make it look dope. That's the first thing. Number two is take care of the lazy DM, because we're all lazy DMs. <laughs> Ease of use means being able to access all of the tools that you need in order to get the adventure started. So we use the camera technique called tilt shift. It actually makes things look small. We want to make sure that the experience for you is that you're experiencing a miniature set. The tilt shift camera was really chosen so that people understood that this wasn't a video game, 
but it is a digital experience. We want to give people more minis, more options for character customization. You can actually change the features, do what you want with it. And you're going to use this miniature approach to tell stories just like you do in physical tabletop. To have your character live. I'm transported there but I'm not limited by the digital technology. We might give you a pre-made campaign from us that has an exciting castle or keep with a dungeon inside of it, exciting NPCs, but then you're gonna be able to take this playset, take it apart, and build your own. We're gonna have a really robust tool for you to be able to create your own dungeons. This is just the start of 1D&D, &D, and we are relying on all of you to help us out and figure out that future together. What you're gonna be able to see starting in August is a steady release of these playtest packages where you'll be able to engage with key aspects of the game, provide us with feedback that then we will digest, process, interpret, analyze, and then act upon. Really, it's you shaping the next generation of Dungeons and & Dragons, and we want to hear exactly what you have to say. Playtesting starts today. Go to dndbeyond.com, download the playtest packet, and get ready to let us know where you'd like this next leg of the adventure to go.